Okay, so pardon the mess here a little bit. I did skip over um, doing several things to this frame. We have the bottom plate with the arms and the mid plate with the brackets all put on here. Looks nice, it's solid. Well, I can't really say too solid because these arms are only like six millimeters thick in width, maybe three wide. But this is what we have for the frame so far. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to put the motors on and I'm going to get the stack established as to where it's going to be with all of the TPU for the camera and everything like that so we can see exactly what we're looking at before we get this going. Real quick, before we get too far into this, I'm going to take a split second for the people that appreciate good quality 3D printing, and we're going to take a quick look at the TPU. So we have a split ring here on the side. I'm sorry, my hand is not the best for this. Um, and then this is supposed to fit like so, and then you have your antenna in the front. So we do have a little bit of residue, a little stringy on one, not so much on the second one. Both of the split arm gaps are really nice though. Here we have one of the arm guards, the second one, just looking at the top right now, really nice. Now let's check out the bottom. And you can see that this was definitely planted on a good firm surface when it was printed. This actually looks like it was printed on carbon fiber. Raw carbon fiber. You don't really get that effect on too many different things. The edges are nice, crisp, clean on these at least. So there's <clears throat> six of the components. Here is our GPS bay, a little stringy there, not bad, a little bit in the overhang here, a little, I've got to find something better to do this over, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's not bad, and there's no gaps, it is clean, if you look at it, it's solid. No gaps at all. Two little pieces here. Nothing in the middle there. That one's nice and clean. There we go. Nice and clean there. And then we have this last piece here for our VTX and everything to get mounted on. There's a little Little piece right there I just ripped off. A little bit out to the side there. But overall, TPU is pretty good on this. There are a couple more pieces. This is not for the frame initially. This is if you have the Insta camera. It does come with this, which is nice. This is going to be a ladder video. I do plan on getting this for it. But that TPU also does look really, really crisp. It's got a nice glow to it. I like the orange on this. It's really nice. Okay, so the TPU is good. Alright, so moving right along here. We have a good portion of this little guy put together here. We do have all four motors mounted One, two, three, four. We have the TPU arm guards on the bottom of it. We have the VTX up the back guard here. We have the antenna guards just below the camera mounts to the front here. 
and that's where we're sitting. So we got the ESC here, the 4 to 1, 20 by 20 on. Um, I am going to correct Sky Stars and their way of making this. You are going to have to literally resource all your motors to do this build properly because the way that these tabs sit for your XT30s coming out the back do interfere with your TPU in the back. So it's like a, a chance up to you. I don't do you do you want to keep the TPU? Do you want to put your XT30 out the front? There is literally more than enough space for it to come out. I mean, you can literally see the tabs right there in this slot when I pick this up. Bam. So you can have the battery reversed. You don't have to have them run out the back. If you're trying to do this, I'll show you. It doesn't fit. This does not. And then when it does, you're pushed off of your brackets for your spacer in the bottom. So, fix to this. If you have a problem, turn it around, re source your motors your one two three four well your technically your one two three four is now one two three four i'll cover that in a different video but just so you know we're going to move this around outside of the way that it looks for right now moving right along here we have all 12 of our motor wires soldered up back out on this and I am going to say something about this real quick just for the sake of this video and because this is a DIY I did not trim any wires at all whatsoever everything that is on here is two length per measurement of the box so I'm gonna explain to you real quick why I did that and that is because if anything ever gets hit in the front literally you have a 999 percent chance of your wares not getting damaged to the bottom so if you see that that's perfect you can put a piece of electrical tape you can put a zip tie in here just between this bracket and this mount and then another one here to keep it down and then a slight piece of electrical tape here and there these guys come right out the back just fine just nice right over the top and they're gonna fit perfect next thing I'm going to do while keeping these out of the way, I'm going to put in the capacitor and the XC30 wires. So hopefully I didn't jump too far ahead, but I do want to point out something real quick that if you're going to do this like this, at least the way that I like my wires to be conserved and stable up out of the way, uh, what you want to do is you want to take and you want to solder your wires to your XT30 here run them through the top plate then solder them to your 4-in-1 that way when you pull this down you're good to go and you don't have to worry about it coming out the side or whatever this can really easily slide back and forth and I know this for a fact because I'm going to show you something and if you look really close I double wrapped this so I took my own shrink wrap and put it over the original XT30 cord because I like a little extra protection around my wires or whatever so it, it'll fit perfect if you do it without this but even if you decide to double wrap it like I did you'll still have enough clearance to make it through the top plate Okay, so with the changes that we have made initially to the forum one, I have also utilized additional changes to the flight controller, being this. I had to turn the ESC 180 degrees around, and if you look right here, Thank you. 
both micro GXT panels are on the same side of the boards. So, that being said, if you look and you see the arrow right there for the flight controller, it is now pointing backwards. So what we are going to have to do, in addition to resourcing the motors, we are going to have to create an offset for the flight controller. But I'll show you how to do that, it's not a big deal. Okay, also, real quick, <laughs> I do want to point something out, and that is the fact that this extra wannabe circuit board that you think is for circuit practice is not for circuit practice, okay? Do not use this for your twiddling. Do not use this to practice soldering on. This has a very specific purpose, and that is to show you the pinout of exactly what you're doing. You have your positive, your signal 1, your signal 2, signal 3, signal 4, your grounds over here, your power's in there, you have your USB over here, your boot button is here, signals down to the side, the signals up to the right right there. Do not lose this. If you lose this, you will be in a world of hurt. I can tell you that right now because I have looked and looked and looked for a pinout on this and it lets you know very specifically what goes where on that flight controller which is brand new nobody knows a whole lot about you're not going to know what to do so make sure that you do not lose this yeah so as far as the flight controller goes with it being pinned out in this direction if you go to your reference the a third to the last one right here on the bottom right this is your camera you move up the last pin and the second layer up there's your v bit or your 5 volt you do not want to hook this up to v bit and then your bottom one right here on the right hand corner that is your ground we are going to hook up the GPS next and go from there. We have the Haitian BN-180. That is our GPS right here. Camera does not want to zoom in the greatest. But this is what we have. And from this side just trying to give you a, an idea of this from left to right we have uh, from pins 1, 2, 3, 4 we're going to start with 1 and end at 4 so pin 1 being ground pin 2 being TX pin 3 being RX and pin 4 being VCC which is our voltage so that's how that is I know I said I was going to wire this up right now but I am not going to do that and I'll explain why in a minute because I do not have this thing fully put together and I want to get a distinctive amount of length measured out specifically to get the GPS on here. But what I am going to tell you that I'm going to do ahead of time is that I'm going to solder these four pins right here on the bottom left, hand, well mid left hand corner and that is the 5 volt the ground, the T4, and the R4. And that is these four pins. To the bottom right here. And that is where I'm going to put the GPS on the flight controller. Be it is that this is a pin and play and there is no receiver included. I'm just going to go ahead and mark off what I've done so far as pads. So we're going to skip the top two over here. The first one is going to be PPM. Next one down is J3. Okay, the following three pads that I have soldered up are S bus, ground, and 5 volt. The one in the middle I soldered by mistake. That is the EVE. Uh, below that, starting from the bottom, working on the way up, we have our R4, our T4, our ground, and our 5 volt. That is going to be for the GPS. On the side over here, 
for the VTX we have the very first one done there's a second layer up here the third one on the right and then just down over so we have our first one our fourth one and then on the top it would be the third one for our VTX now that being said this does come with its own VTX I'm aware of this uh, it also does say that this is long range. So I'm going to be building this two different ways. Because I say it's long range, so I'm going to say exactly how far I can get this out at 50% 50, 50 battery and still bring it back. What we have right here, we have a Unify Pro ready to go into this long range build. What we have right here, this is our TBS tracer. This is the receiver that I'm going to be using for this build. So I am actually going to push the full limits of this and see exactly how far that it can go because I also just recently got this. So that mixed with this, mixed with that, mixed with this and my new Radio Master TX16, we're going to put this thing to the test. But for right now, that's all the video that I have on this. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. This is Thumb FPV. Have a good one. I have another video up soon.